Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is Monday, May the 3rd, 2021. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. Let's talk Derek Chisora. Let's talk Joseph Parker. Let's be a bit critical of both. But first, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, the problems inherent in both fighters were on full display in this fight, which quite frankly could easily have been scored the other way, giving Derek Chisora the victory. What I want people to do is to go to my community page right now on YouTube, just take a glance. I had a poll up, a lot of you responded to it. Who really won the fight? The last time I looked, Derek Chisora was in the lead. Understand, the scoring of this flight was a the scoring of this fight was a coin flip. Flip a coin. However, it landed if you declared that person the winner, there could be no outcry. Right? The fight was that close. But understand it's a tale of two fights. And you see what's wrong with both fighters. Now, first, let me say, I share Derek Chisora's philosophy on life. Right? Chisora, who's in his mid to later 30s, right, is tired of having to cater to sanctioning bodies. Right? I personally feel that the sanctioning bodies are a joke. How else would we have gotten a middleweight title fight this weekend involving a fighter who was not ranked in the top 30 on box rack in the division, right? Against an opponent who himself had never fought at middleweight, right? The sanctioning bodies are a joke. I believe fighters need to think in terms of markets. If you're the next Mike Tyson, if you're a Teofimo Lopez, if you're a Vasily Lomachenko, a Terence Crawford, then the public is going to demand that you get a shot at the title. But you really can't cater to these sanctioning bodies. You really can't go by who they want you to fight, especially not when you're in your mid to late 30s at heavyweight like Derek Chisora is. You really have to go for market opportunities paydays, fights where the people are going to come out and watch you fight, right? The sanctioning bodies, they have their own political agendas. Their primary concern is not putting food on your table, money in your wallet that you could use to pay for your family's bills. So Derek Chisora has made a decision. He's going to fight interesting fighters. By the way, few in boxing fight the level of competition that Derek Chisora fights. Understand, during this pandemic era, Derek Chisora did something many heavyweights are afraid to do. He fought Alexander Usyk. He follows that up by fighting Joseph Parker, right? Of course, he's already fought Dylan White. Of course, he fought Vitaly Klitschko. Of course he fought David Hay. In other words, you look at the level of opposition that Derek Chisora, who also fought Tyson Fury, has fought, and it matches up, in my opinion, with anybody in the heavyweight division. Right? Let's keep in mind, this is an era, and I don't fault people for this, because you're dealing with purses from investors and sovereign nations during a COVID lockdown in many countries, right? India is suffering right now because of COVID. So you're going to have contracting parties reneging on deals. It's my understanding that's what's happening right now in the Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury situation, right? They got a promise from some sovereign nation for millions and millions of dollars in a site fee. And of course, now the money isn't coming through. Okay, I don't blame some fighters, but understand we're in an era where you're hard pressed 
to see heavyweights with a lot of big names on their resume. Right? That's just the reality, folks. As I make this video, Anthony Joshua has fought neither Deontay Wilder nor Tyson Fury. And if I ask you which heavyweights other than Joshua have the most legitimate claims of having dominated the division in the last seven years, I'm guessing many of you would name Wilder or Tyson Fury. Well, understand, Chisora's already fought. Tyson Fury. Chisora's already fought Usyk. Right? Chisora isn't standing in the line that the sanctioning bodies want fighters to stand in, waiting for the sanctioning body to give him some eliminator match. I applaud him for it. Now let's talk about this fight. Chisora in the first few rounds is an absolute terror. Right, many of you have contacted me, have left messages in the comment section of earlier videos talking about how Usyk looked ordinary at heavyweight against Chisora. Right, the idea is that Usyk is a Hall of Famer at Cruiser, but this is a different part of the neighborhood. Right, and they're saying, hey, Derek Chisora was chasing him around. In the early rounds, he couldn't stay in the pocket. Folks, you name me the fighter at heavyweight, and I'll name you someone who Derek Chisora can chase around in the early rounds. Derek Chisora, early in fights, I don't care how old he is, is a plus in terms of his level of aggression, his ability to throw looping punches that surprise an opponent who isn't ready for the angles. He doesn't care how powerful you are. He's prepared to crash the volume, uh, crash the pocket, and he's prepared to do so with volume. Now let's talk about skill level here. I'm going to name a great fighter, right? If you look at Floyd Mayweather, against fighters like Carlos Baldemir, for example, against Shane Mosley, for example, you're going to notice that as an opponent is trying to bum rush Floyd, Prime Mayweather was able to keep them on a shoulder. Floyd didn't have to back up if he didn't want to. Floyd could stop a charging fighter without catching him with anything big. Simply by muscling up, hiding his head. This requires defensive skills and confidence. Hiding his head behind his shoulder. Right? Bracing his feet. And having the guy walk into him. So you don't get the dynamic in Floyd fights where he's unable to stay in the pocket. Where he starts backing up against a hunter who's hunting him down. Who's forcing him to look for shelter up against the ropes. Don't get me wrong. Later Floyd voluntarily would go up against the ropes. The Marcus Maidana fights, right? Older fighters want to rest their legs. So like Ali against Foreman, who strategically is over by the ropes, Floyd Mayweather at times would decide, okay, I'm going to be up by the ropes. But understand, Prime Mayweather, even when hurt badly, which is what he was by Shane Mosley, understood, I can't back up right now. Because if I do, this guy who has me hurt is going to finish me. So you'll notice Mayweather's knees get buckled by Shane Mosley. You'll notice Mayweather gets hit so hard, his glove touches the canvas against Zab Judah. 
but Mayweather, who has a back foot game, decided, you know what, I need to stay in the middle of the ring because I need to stop this dynamic. I cannot have a guy, as they say in the trade, walk me down. Now, early in this fight, Derek Chisora is on his front foot. He's aggressive. That's what Derek does. That's why, quite frankly, in my opinion, he's going to be one of the tougher fights at heavyweight that Usyk will have had. Right? Style-wise, Derek Chisora is a nightmare for an opponent who's expecting a slow start. For an opponent who's expecting a feeling out period. Chisora's a nightmare. Chisora is one of the biggest tests in a heavyweight division the first three rounds of a fight. I don't care what his record is. Understand too, his record is what it is because he insists on fighting the Tyson Furies, the David Hayes, the Dylan Whites, the Usyk's. Right? That's why his record is what it is. He's fighting elite competition. Vitaly Klitschko. So here, he's on his front foot. He's aggressive. And you see what's wrong with Joseph Parker. Parker would own the heavyweight division, folks if he just had the skill level of a Floyd Mayweather, right? Understand, Parker has had fights where he's on his front foot hunting down guys. Look at the Yui Fury fight. Parker is pinpoint with punches at times. Parker has power. I believe Parker, even today, after a loss to Dylan White, is more talented than Dylan White. He's certainly more mobile. But as Derek Chisora crashes the pocket early, and understand, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who looks at Derek Chisora films. All you have to do is look at Derek Chisora David Hay. Right? What's Derek Chisora doing? He's trying to hunt down David Hay. Huge puncher makes no difference to Derek Chisora. He's trying to hunt him down. Look at Chisora against Tyson Fury. Derek Chisora's trying to hunt down Tyson Fury early. So Joseph Parker, who's split with his trainer, who's with a new trainer, Andy Lee, who's trying to rebuild his career, who has openly said that he doesn't want to keep fighting into his mid-30s. So he needs to peak now. What he plans on doing in the sport, he needs to do it right now. You mean to tell me that here's a guy fighting a guy who he knows is going to crash the pocket. And unlike Floyd, who could build a dam, basically, who can say, look, Shane Mosley, I know you destroyed. Antonio Margarito, I know you have a heavy right hand, but you're not going to get me to back up, brother. You're not going to walk me down. Your aggression ends here. That's even after Floyd gets hit with the right hand. Floyd starts holding the right hand. Very slick move. Saved Floyd's unbeaten streak. Floyd was prepared to grapple, to hold, because Floyd understood, I can't back up here, especially not hurt. Well, Derek Chisora bum rushes Joseph Parker, who, guess what, folks, backs up. He can't stop Chisora from coming forward. Let's be real here. Isn't that the problem with Joseph Parker? bit too lackadaisical. Look surprised by the level of aggression. Folks, the knockdown, and it's a legit knockdown in my eyes. I know many of you disagree. But
But somebody explained to me how, literally, seconds into the fight, seconds into the fight, Joseph Parker against an on-rushing Derek Chisora is over by the corner. How does that happen, folks? I mean, if you're going to move, move laterally, right? If you're going to move, move like Ali. Isn't the idea not to get hit, not to get cornered? No, Joseph Parker, folks, gets cornered seconds into the fight. Derek Chisora loops the right hand. Now, all I can say is, if I start to throw a right hand and you turn away and have the back of your head between you and my right hand, am I to blame for hitting you in the back of the head? Folks, that was Joseph Parker's defense. Derek Jazora charges forward. Jazora already has him in the corner doesn't have to work hard to corner him then he throws the looping right hand this is seconds into the fight and this was Joseph Parker's defense so Parker gets hit Parker gets dropped you understood the first four rounds of this fight Joseph Parker had no idea. Let me repeat that. No idea of how to stop Derek Chisora from coming forward. Right? Just didn't know how. Understand, folks, that was a major part of Floyd Mayweather's game. Right? Floyd was the one who decided where you were in the ring. Right? Floyd at different times. In fact, on my gamblersadvisory.com page, I have a little film clip of Floyd with his back up against the ropes because that's where Floyd wanted to be. Right? Floyd is teaching a younger Saul Alvarez how to box and this is with Floyd in the corner with his back up against the ropes I encourage people to look at the film clip you're gonna notice some punches landed clean by Floyd you're gonna notice Canelo and isn't this where Canelo is lethal now Canelo has Floyd up on the ropes Canelo throws a big punch. Doesn't come close to landing it. It's then you realize that Floyd wants him to throw that punch. Because Floyd already has the counter program. Now that's Mayweather, not Parker. Parker, with faster hands than you think. With more accuracy than you think. With more athleticism than you think. In other words, Parker is the guy who you look at and you say, this guy is better than advertised. Is being chased from the pocket by Derek Chisora the first four rounds. Folks, the fight is lopsided in Chisora's favor early. But then we get to the father time part of the fight. Right? Unfortunately, Derek Chisora gets tired, as a lot of fighters do in their 30s. Derek Chisora is that guy who needs a second win. So we get to the middle of the fight, and it's only when Chisora gets tired, just like in the Usyk fight, that you start to see the Joseph Parker who you know exists but who the fighter himself is hesitant to show. So Joseph Parker starts throwing clean, straight punches. 
starts flashing hand speed, but that's after the wave has hit his beach. So he's operating from a deficit, folks. The million dollar question in this fight is whether Derek Chisora did enough the second half of the fight to hold on to a portion of the lead that he built up the first half of the fight. It's a great fight. Make no mistake about it. Just understand, when you're dealing with these two guys, right, Derek Chisora is going to start fast. Derek Chisora is going to test whoever he's fighting early. Fiddly Klitschko, Usyk. I believe I just named two of the best fighters of our time. Tyson Fury. Let's call it three. Derek Chisora is going to test whoever he's fighting early. In the Tyson Fury fight, Derek Chisora comes inside. Tyson Fury allows himself to go over to the ropes, but there's a difference. Tyson Fury starts fighting inside against Derek Chisora. Now, for those of you who doubt Tyson Fury's greatness, his position at the top of the heavyweight division right now, I want you to look at Tyson Fury against Derek Chisora. You're going to notice Tyson Fury can fight inside against Derek Chisora. Right? And Fury's much taller. Right? So Fury, for all the jabbing, for all the ambidexterity, understand, Fury has a right jab, folks. That's damn good. Right? You didn't have to see it in the Wilder rematch because Fury was dominating in an orthodox stance. Understand, for all the jabbing, for all the movement, if everything breaks down, against an aggressive fighter like a Dell boy, Derek Chisora, Tyson Fury can fight inside. You don't know that with Joseph Parker. Right? You just don't. So let's just say, these are two fighters you need to put asterisks next to. Right? I've seen Joseph Parker get angry in fights. I've seen Joseph Parker when he thinks he needs to step on the gas to win a fight. As I've said before here, his fight against Yui Fury is remarkable. Both in Parker's aggression as well as in Fury's footwork. You want to see a textbook exhibition of great footwork, look at Fury's footwork in his fight against Joseph Parker, Yui Fury, right? Unfortunately, Yui forgot that this is boxing and you have to throw punches. I thought Parker won the fight. I thought Parker was aggressive. I think that Parker beats Anthony Joshua. But then you have fights like this fight, where you're looking at Parker, you're thinking, okay, Parker just split from his trainer. Uh, now Parker's with a new training group. Uh, this is a high-profile fight. Parker needs this win to get back in the mix. There are mixed reviews of his fight against Junior Fa. Parker needs to make a statement. Then you watch the first four rounds, and you just don't see the hunger. You see Parker get knocked down. <laughs> you see Parker get knocked down by, you know, Derek Chisora early. Then he gets off the canvas and the look on his face just doesn't look angry enough. Just doesn't look, you know, like a guy who's been knocked down and embarrassed enough for me. Right? All I can say is, I saw Marvin Hagler get knocked down early in a fight by Juan Rodan. And you understood when Hagler got off the canvas <laughs> that there was going to be a price to pay. You knew Marvin 
was going to make sure everyone in the arena knew he was Marvin Hagler. Here, Joseph Parker gets off the canvas. There's no lift in energy, folks. You're looking at him. You're saying, man, how many seconds was that? Was that 10 seconds into the fight? He gets dropped. He gets off the canvas. No urgency. No fire. As for Derek Chisora, there's a lot of fire. But then it starts raining the second half of the fight. And you realize, man, Derek is getting roughed up. Derek can't go into defense mode. Derek on his back foot, tired, just isn't competitive in the second half of fights. So I'm looking forward to seeing both of these guys fight on in the future. Let's just say if you're betting the fight, you need to understand that whatever talent gap Joseph Parker has on the opponent, he might be uninspired the first half of the fight. Folks, he fights Andy Ruiz for the title and was uninspired the first half of that fight. As for Derek Chisora, the fire still burns. It's just that, it's just that he runs out of logs. He runs out of fuel after the first half of the fight. I don't think Usyk is going to face a guy as aggressive as Derek Chisora was. Again, in the heavyweight division. Right? I don't. I think Chisora is that much of a problem. I think Usyk's movement would allow him to win several early rounds against other elite heavyweights that he couldn't win against the smothering Derek Chisora. Right? Chisora is a great litmus test. He was this close to closing out this fight early against Joseph Parker. Right? And you know what I believe? Heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. I think Derek Chisora just needs to catch the right elite heavyweight sleeping and needs to be able to finish the job. I believe Joseph Parker needs to talk to Andy Lee. Andy Lee was a fighter with a lot of emotion and a lot of fire. Andy Lee's his new trainer. Right? Andy and Parker need to have some way to have Parker understand that he needs to be more aggressive and want it more early in fights. He can't rely on the judges to save him in fights. Right? The people here online on my site believe Derek Chisora won this fight. Right? Just, just on, you know, Joseph Parker needs to understand that. Let me also say, too, that he's fighting Anthony Joshua in the United Kingdom. Right? As far as I, I see it, this would be like fighting Manny Pacquiao in the Philippines. Right? You're fighting a fighter who's loved in front of his fans. Now, I would have preferred they, they had a ref I didn't like. When the referee kept pushing Parker away from Joshua, I would have preferred if Parker risks getting suspended, getting, you know, put it this way. I would have preferred to see Parker push the issue, disregard the referee, jump inside and dare the ref to disqualify him. Then to see Parker stay outside and not really challenge Joshua that fight. Right? The Parker who fights Yui Fury wins that fight, folks. Where was that Parker? 
Also, Parker's fighting Dylan White. He gets knocked down by a Dylan White forearm. Right? Then Parker's lounging around. Where's the urgency? Then Parker drills Dylan White, drops him in the last round. Right? White goes down hard. You're looking at that and you're saying, where was that in the 10th round when you'd have a time to finish him? Where was that in the 11th round when you'd have a chance to finish him? So Parker, in particular, is frustrating for gamblers. The talent is there. You need to be aware of the talent. He reminds me of Mike Weaver, for those of you who remember that heavyweight champ from an earlier generation. The talent is there. The question is whether the fire is there. You need to be careful with Parker. Right? If Parker gets upset in a fight, he has a chance of winning it against anybody. But if Parker doesn't get upset, a Derek Chisora and Andy Ruiz could surprise him one day by winning on the scorecards. Parker acts like everyone knows he's going to win the fight on the scorecards. Here, officially he did, unofficially he might not have. Let's hope his new corner instills a little bit more fire in him. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. The highlights of the fight are in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.